for those of you who don't know Capgemini, I'll do a quick introduction about what we'll cover today. Um, my job as uh, global head of, of digital and content is, is focused on a network of about 400 people inside of a company of about 200,000, uh, covering 27 countries and a bunch of other large numbers. Um, and most of what my day to day is about is moving those 400 people into the smartest position that they can be in, in terms of the content they create and the marketing that they do. Uh, it's a 50 year old company. We turned 50 um, last month. And in that kind of culture, um, it, uh, you find some very interesting pockets of, of uh, people who are a little bit far behind the market. So we've been trying to um, move a lot of people uh, into a more uh, digital way of, of thinking and working, and so this project was really all about that. Um, so we'll talk about how we let, came from uh, Drupal, and then uh, that change management process about how we actually tried to change some behaviors, uh, and then what life looks like today. So Capgemini, for those of you who don't know, it's, it's a big IT consultant, um, everything from cloud and cybersecurity to um, digital services, uh, a whole lot of business service outsourcing. Well, we're present in 40 countries, uh, like I said, uh, 200,000 people. Um, and then that Marcom function uh, that I sit at the kind of corporate level that's in charge of coordinating is about 400 people globally. And um, we operate under two brands, uh, at least that I control. That's the, the blue Capgemini brand that you can see there, and then Capgemini Consulting, which is its own thing. So it's a really uh, fractured, diverse matrix of people that, um, uh, the other number I should probably put up here is uh, we're under something like 50 or 60 different P&Ls globally. So the money is spent in a, a million different directions. Um, and that's probably where we got into trouble and how our system was uh, architected uh, before. So um, really digital became uh, a choke point for us. And um, the system we, we built wasn't really working. So the way content would get pushed through this Drupal CMS, which was on multiple domains, is uh, if I'm a marketer and I see a word that's wrong on whatever my campaign page is, let alone actually launch a campaign, uh, I have to send an email to a team in India and then they've got a, a scope of work of something like three or four business days if you're lucky to make the change. This was a five or six year old Drupal CMS uh, I'm not really sure, this is kind of before my time, I'm not really sure how that ended up happening, but we ended up having literally like four people who knew how to use this Drupal CMS in a company of 200,000 people. Um, so that was a major, major uh, red flag for me when I, when I took the job. Um, so uh, that was really hard and uh, pulling all that money together was a, 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 a big issue as well. And then uh, we had no connection back to our CRM platform, which is Salesforce has been rolled out uh, recently. So all of the forms that we were capturing, all of the data, um, that was being done on a bunch of different corners, a bunch of different websites. Uh, and then our recruitment needs were, weren't being met. Something like 40% of our traffic is recruitment. You might imagine in a, in a company of 200,000, we have to hire something like 30 to 40,000 people a year. So um, the ability to surface jobs on our web properties and actually make them findable and searchable and, and easy to apply was, was a major problem for us. So the, uh, the marketing teams would end up uh, waiting for too long. They would send things through uh, email. Um, another big uh, budget problem for us was that, uh, you know, marketers are always trying to get the most custom uh, experience for whatever campaign they're launching. And for us to get a new template built in, in Drupal literally took weeks or months sometimes and it cost a lot of money. And everybody hated what we currently had, so we knew we needed something better there as well. Um, and then for me, the, the, the biggest, biggest problem was that I had this network of 400 people who didn't know how to use websites. Um, they didn't really have an appreciation for what a CMS can do. Uh, they didn't um, think about copywriting and writing for an audience. They didn't think about the connection to social media. Um, they're doing really, really old school stuff like battle cards and just kind of living in PowerPoint and, and not really thinking through the, the whole thing. So we needed a, a system and a piece of technology that would force a reckoning of our, of our uh, team members to actually learn what digital publishing meant and what digital marketing means today. Uh, in a bunch of different cultures and languages and, and markets, by the way. Um, and, and one other thing I have in here is that because this website sucked so bad, 
um, teams, because they have distributed P&Ls, they can spend their own money. They don't have to spend it through me. They were standing up their own microsites and hosting them with a million different people. So we still to this day are finding these random ass websites and I have to be <laughs> the ax man who says I'm stealing your website away from you and we're going to put it on, on WordPress. So uh, we kind of knew what the problem was um, and then we started talking with uh, Human Made who has been our partner throughout this whole thing uh, about what we really needed to do. Um, so we needed to make the right technology choice for our business needs. Um, we knew that we couldn't uh, you know, stop publishing for a moment uh, in all of these markets. And then probably the, the biggest thing and, and probably the cause of uh, a, a lot of gray hairs from a couple of these guys over here was that we uh, had a brand relaunch in September and that gave us a, a absolute hard deadline. Couldn't push uh, very far. I think we had a, a couple uh, short delays, but really they, our backs were up against the wall. We had to make this thing work um, because we needed a website to go live for this 50th anniversary in a completely brand new brand. Um, so everybody was, you know, freaking out. Uh, so um, my background is actually in, uh, in publishing and, and editing. I was uh, a journalist a long time ago and then I worked at uh, News Corp in New York for a while and we used WordPress VIP at the New York Post. So first thing I said was, well, why can't we just put everybody on WordPress? Why is this so hard? Um, and so that was what we ended up doing because it was, uh, you know, completely usable, uh, it was backwards compatible, so we knew we wouldn't run into some of these problems. And uh, I knew we were going to need a fairly um, custom solution and something instead of something out of the box. So I knew that the WordPress community would, you know, uh, really be, uh, I think, a, a plus for helping us build what we needed. Uh, a bit more about why. Um, so we needed uh, the CMS to actually empower these local teams that are you know, in, in Germany and Canada and Mexico and Vietnam to um, be able to publish content uh, but actually still stay within kind of the corporate bounds of, of uh, all the content we were pushing to them, staying within a, 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 you know, the brand of, of what we were asking them to do. Um, so uh, we also knew that because these people weren't super experienced with a lot of uh, CMS work. We needed uh, varying levels of access for them and we knew WordPress could do that. Um, and again, I, I use the word democratize a lot, uh, really trying to get more people using the CMS uh, at the local level uh, to actually um, publish their own content as well instead of just taking stuff from global. And then uh, because we were um, still kind of smarting from how annoying it was to get a new template built. We wanted that modular approach to uh, figure out new landing pages um, without having a design team have to you know, figure things out. So uh, what we use the technology to kind of push this change. Uh, a lot of it came down to uh, a really complex, uh, I think it was complex, syndication system um, that human made built. So uh, we go to market in a bunch of languages so things had to be translated pretty easily. Um, those local editors had to be able to accept or reject global content being pushed down to them. Um, so they had to be able to decide when to detach it. So I had a conversation with a guy in uh, North America yesterday who came to me and he was new and he wasn't um, that familiar with the CMS yet. And we have a big uh, research agency in-house that we produce a lot of uh, big reports. And he said, how do you feel about uh, maybe gating this uh, this paper so I can you know, capture some email addresses. And I was like, man, I don't care. It's not my website. If you want to put a gate, detach the content and do it yourself. I don't want to be involved in those conversations because we built a system to do exactly just that. Um, and then also, uh, something we don't do a lot of but we're trying to push towards is actually sharing content laterally from country to country and not having it just come from global. Um, so, and then all of that had to be done by this distributed network of, of people all over the place. Uh, and so here we are today. Um, we're in multiple languages. Uh, we've got a really nice calendar that we didn't have before. So part of the reason why it was also so difficult uh, when someone would email a change, let's say a global marketer needed to push a global campaign to everybody, um, that was all actually done through Basecamp. So someone would send a zip file of all the assets, people would pull it down off Basecamp and then upload it to their local site. Uh, they also didn't know when a campaign was coming. We would have to email them uh, and they would have to remember. 
Um, again, a really not very digitally savvy marketing team a couple years ago. So a, uh, a global calendar went a long way of, of just having a single record of what every country is publishing uh, every day. And so I can go in and see exactly what Germany's doing. And, but then Germany can see that uh, a global campaign is coming tomorrow and they need to you know, clear space on the homepage for them. Um, and then uh, you can see the featured jobs. Uh, we feature jobs all over the website now and, and kind of bake that in. Uh, and that's coming from our, our SAP system. Um, is a really annoying XML feed that uh, Shadi has to deal with all the time. So here we are today. Uh, we went from, I think, four qualified Drupal webmasters to a network of, and this is a rough number of maybe 70, but maybe more people with varying levels of, of publisher access. Uh, and that's growing all the time across those, those 27 sites and, and 40 markets. Um, something else I didn't really mention is that we've got an internal uh, employee advocacy program called Expert Connect. So we've got about a thousand people who have signed up to basically be wrangled to uh, use their own social channels to push corporate content. Um, but that also means that they are uh, bloggers and, and producing content on behalf of the company on our uh, CMS. And um, they hated Drupal so much that we were actually seeing attrition from the program instead of uh, growing. So now we've actually got 700 bloggers as part of the CMS as well, and they're going in there and, and uh, publishing content all the time. Um, again, the, 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 the fact that we've got um, local access to content, uh, whereas before we had almost none, uh, is really the biggest win of the, of the program for me and, and uh, the fact that we were able to build something that was actually very quickly adopted by this network. We didn't have to do a whole lot of arm twisting. Um, so people are, are able to, to figure out those the CRM forms at the local level. Uh, they've got the, the jobs feed, they're, they're publishing blogs, and then of course like your, your average um, campaigns uh, as well are all kind of controlled um, by a very wide variety of people and a wide variety of topics. Um, so that, that uh, scale and flexibility was, was I, I, in my opinion, kind of the biggest win of the project. Um, so that's, that's it. Uh, yeah, it's a short but sweet story. Um, I'm sure we've got some questions on the floor. I just I also want to say that it, we should acknowledge that um, there's some very good training going on. Yes. Uh, with the training company is uh, blank. Dash and Kane. Dash and Kane, excellent training company, and they were really interesting to have training really part of the design process as right. well for the admin as well. So that was a really good. They're a great team to work with, and uh, your Max Edge team. So really now within your Marcom function, there is a, a, a high-functioning WordPress development team now. Yeah. The, the idea would be hopefully seeing them sort of contributing back into this kind of forum as well. It's like peers and yeah. ours. That's a, a good way for the story to develop in the future. But uh, questions from the floor? I think part would be a good way to go now. Do we have any questions from the floor? Oh, we do have a few. Your project manager seems to have <laughs> 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 What could you possibly not know about this project? <laughs> well, you kind of already alluded to the fact that adoption seems strong, but I want to dig that a little bit further in terms of workflow. Do you find that adoption is strong all the way around, or do people still kind of fall back on bad habits in terms of emailing around a lot, sending documents back and forth, or are yeah. people picking it up pretty well? It's interesting. The, the global marketing team that I am closest to in you know, management structure and, and budget management, they're all on board. And now this thing is bumping up against a lot of these other global teams like recruiting, like Capgemini Consulting, that whereas before I wasn't even talking to them and now they are coming to us and wanting to figure out how we figure that stuff out. Um, recruitment is a really, really big one because they're not only worried about how they get those 30,000 people in, but how do they publish content and uh, figure out the employer brand stuff so we're now working on um, onboarding and, and getting completely different business units to engage with us. So that's been pretty cool. Hello. Hey. Um, two, two questions. Uh, first one, you alluded to syndication. Can you briefly explain how that works? Because I've also looked into doing that. Yeah. So we've got... Yeah, and, and um, I think it's kind of still under construction. Um, but basically, we've got a global structure 
and a global team that's producing content and campaigns that needs to then be pushed to not only local markets, but then uh, sectors and business units just to make it fun. Uh, and then these, these smaller teams, um, uh, in their instance of WordPress, they get a notification that something's been pushed to them and they're detaching it down to their local admin. Uh, they can then drop in and, and uh, you know, customize it, translate it, add in uh, a download form, whatever they need to do, and then they can push it live to their local version of the site. So it's a multi-site and you have like a dashboard to say new content coming in? Yeah, yeah. Cool, and the second question would be, um, with a large organization, um, what's the process of that new users registering? Does it integrate with like your LDAP or? I'm sorry, the what? Uh, new user registration, I think, onboarding new admin people and authors and editors. Because, because yeah. with a big company like yours, you can have a lot of churn people in and out and managing users can be coming like that. Yeah, so with that, we've got a, uh, a centralized team in Mumbai that is our center of excellence that a request goes into them to add in a new user at the um, specific um, you know, access point, so if they're a contributor or a full site editor. Uh, the whole thing's behind uh, single sign-on too, which is again a really big uh, part of the process. So if someone um, leaves our company, then I think you know, they won't have access again uh, because they're not in the Capgemini system, they won't be able to access WordPress either. What might be a fun thing to do right now is we've got a few human-made people who have worked on this project. Yeah, okay, forget, so more technical than that, I won't be able to answer. On human-made who has worked on this project, wave your hands and then if people can snipe them for the technology stuff. I <laughs> applaud you all. Uh, stand if you want, yeah. Okay, so yeah, there's, there's Shadi, there's Rob, uh, uh, John's over there, and Jenny's there, and I think that's probably good. There we go, so i uh, catch up with them later. Uh, time for one more question. What was the um, process you went through to um, choose WordPress, kind of at the organizational level? And were there any barriers you ran into internally in terms of deciding on WordPress as the CMS? That's a good question. Um, there, so the, the technical manager who, um, who ran the project, uh, it was really just a conversation between uh, he and I. Um, I came in really just saying WordPress. Um, I didn't really feel like doing anything else. Um, the rub and where it got really interesting is that Capgemini has a, a big business unit called uh, App Services that builds Drupal websites for clients. And they, uh, and this is how I think we ended up with it in the first place, is that they want to um, showcase that, you know, if we're selling this, we should be using it. And I had really random people, VPs from, from different business units, emailing me at various courses, uh, at various times uh, during the year, saying, like, why are you not building a Drupal website? And we kind of had to, like, kick them off the truck and say, well, you know, this is happening, uh, and there's nothing you can do about it. So that was come some of the stuff we got, but uh, it was pretty much WordPress all the way. And now I have a follow-up question. How do we convince them to switch to WordPress? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, I am at the, the internal marketing side, so I, I don't do a lot of client work. But, it was um, a fat question. Yeah. <laughs> if you need someone to speak on your behalf, um, I'm happy to provide uh, uh, a recommendation. But um, yeah, I, I think they should, to be honest. Cool. Thank you very much indeed, Parker. Thank you. It's been a ride. Thank you. It's been a hell of a ride, yeah. Thank you.